Well, guys, I've been AFK in this hole for about two and a half days straight now at the Villager Breeder. And I'm hoping that there's going to be a bunch of villagers to trade with because I really want a Mending Villager. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. But anyways, guys, welcome back. My name is Python. This is the Hermitcraft Season 5 server. And yes, I do apologize for the slight delay since the last episode. I really have just been AFKing, trying to get myself as many villagers as I possibly can. So... Yes, but anyways guys, thanks for joining me, thank you very much for the support in the series so far, and uh, yeah, today's fan art comes from a user by the name of Pi Squared, and it is a little villager on a cloud saying, curse lifted on me, it's in reference to my single player Minecraft survival series, uh, whereby I, I was cursed and there were nether portals and I wound up on this server, and it was all a bunch of stuff, but basically the curse lifted means that the Minecraft survival single player series has returned, because I am shifting my focus on this channel towards Minecraft content for the most part. Terraria is still going on and will still go on. And uh, yeah, everything's good. Everything's good. Alright guys, so let's head out of the hole here and uh, we are going to do some things. Let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Just so we know where the AFK hall is. And yeah, let's uh, let's head up here. Let's see how things are go- Uh, What? <laughs> in here. Dude, how did he even get in there? It's a one block wide gap. What? <laughs> oh my god. Dude, there's a bunch of skeleton horses here now. Either I was extremely lucky slash unlucky and had the four horsemen of the apocalypse spawn here or I've been pranked. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, so we got ourselves a bit of an issue to start out here, my friends. We're going to get rid of the skeleton horse while maintaining all of these villagers and keeping them all alive. So I think the best way of doing that would be to dispatch of the guys with a bow. Right, unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill the horse. Hey, you dare? I'm going to have to kill the horse who's in there because he's, he's taken up all of the space and I can't be having that. So, I can't believe this. <laughs> Dude, what are the chances? What are the chances? I mean, it's in a one block wide gap. That's just ridiculous. Right, here we go, here we go. Can I hit the skeleton? Ha! Huh. Oh! He's come out! He's come out! Okay, he's good, he's good. Uh, ha, 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 boom! Yes! Aha! Okay, they all good now. Yeah! We're looking good, folks, we're looking good! Yeah, all your, all your, your little brethren, you know, they're all surviving and stuff, and hey, we've got a bunch of horses. Right, let's have a look. So, he's got seven hearts. This guy's got seven hearts. This guy's got also seven hearts. Okay. I don't know how fast they are. I mean, I think I'll go ahead and uh, see what they've got going in just a little bit here, my friends. But in the meantime, let's head down here into the villager pool party. Oh, my goodness me. Right. Okay. So. Oh, lordy, lordy. Right. Let's see what we've got going on here. Oh. My. God. Oh, hey, chicken. There's <laughs> a random chicken down here. What the heck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's so many villagers. There's so many villagers. Oh my goodness me. Dude, what the hell? Oh my god. Right, is there... Oh, Greeny, Greeny, get out of it. Your kind isn't allowed here. I want people who trade and people who trade only. I'm sorry, man. That's just how it is. Right, come on, buddy. You can you can get out as well. Go on. Out of the pool party. Go on. Get into your... There you go. There you go. All right, fantastic. All right, so... There's a lot of people down here, huh? Right, I think what I'm going to go and do first of all is I'm actually going to go ahead and grab as much paper as I possibly can because I think my first put... Um... What? How the hell was he there? What the hell? Okay. But yeah, the first priority is to try and look through all of the librarian villages. I would like to go and see if I can't find myself a mending trade at some point. That would be pretty cool. And failing that, some other, you know, decent trades would be kind of nice to get if I can... Uh, Hello. <laughs> if I can do some stuff. Right, uh, what am I doing? Oh, that's right, sugar cane. Yeah, look at this. Got a whole bunch of it now. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go grab some resources, my friends, some emeralds and all that kind of stuff. And I will be back once we're ready to start trading. All right, guys, the hunt begins. So, uh, cartographer, not exactly useful. Librarian, sweeping edge. Okay, I've already traded with this guy. So what about you? Aqua Affinity, already traded with that guy. Okay, wait, do I not actually have that many new librarians? Punch, uh, this guy, aha! 
Someone new, fantastic. All right, so let's start off with you there, buddy. We'll start off with the paper trade. And then what I usually do, I've got a bit of a system going here. Basically, I go along, I see how many books is in the book trade. So, and then I get myself a bunch of bookshelves to go with that. So let's get three of them so we can get nine. Okay, that'll unlock his next trade, which is going to be glass. Okay, four glass, not bad, not bad. I'll take it, I'll take it. And after the glass trade unlocks the second book trade. Okay, what is it going to be? Luck of the sea. Okay, we're not having very good luck so far, my friends. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of a bunch of books out there. Get ourselves some books. Do the book trade. Unlock the third trade. All right, hey, buddy. Right, so. Uh, there you go. Another emerald for little old you. Okay. All right, and let's see what your final book trade is. Ha! Flame. Oh, man, are you kidding? That sucks. All right, what about you? Cartographer, not exactly useful. What about you? Uh, no, that's a farmer. Cartographer again. Uh, hello. Well, what are you? Hello. Uh, Aqua Affinity already traded with you. Oh, my God. It's so difficult. It's so difficult to see what's going on. Hey, hey, come on. Uh, we've got a butcher here. <sighs> Librarian. Okay, sweet. And this guy's already been traded with as well. Look at this, though. He's got the cheapest paper trade he can get, which is pretty cool. Is that really it? I can't believe it. Unfortunately, with the guys I've already traded with, none of them had mending. Dude, that sucks. I'm actually a little bit heartbroken. I spent all that time AFKing and I haven't managed to... Although, there may be some guys in here. I don't know. There's all sorts of dudes here, apparently. We've got armor and everything. Holy poop. <laughs> Dude, there's so many villagers, though. It's crazy. Just look at that. I feel like that should be screenshot for the episode. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> This is just absolute sheer and utter craziness. I cannot believe it, dudes. No sign of a mending villager. I know, obviously, that there are other hermits who do have mending villagers, but the fact that I haven't managed to get one myself after two and a half days of straight FKing is a little bit heartbreaking, isn't it? I mean, all that time spent and none of my, none of my goals came true. It's a little bit heartbreaking, friends. It is. But, alas, I'll move on. Hey guys, so here we are in the nether. We're in the process of trying to grab as much quartz as we possibly can. For the sake of reference and location, the Wither Skeleton Farm is actually just over there. Which, you know, isn't too far away from where we are currently. So, we shouldn't get lost. Shouldn't be in the operative word. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the reason we're getting quartz is because today, my friends, I would like to make myself sort of a semi-fully automatic, fully self-sustaining sustainable library in that it's going to have like an inbuilt fully automatic sugarcane farm it's going to have like a, a a really sort of micro sort of cow breeder you know how you have the water ones and their cows are bobbing up and down you could just breed them up and then the little babies when they grow up they just get killed by lava yeah that that's what we're going for guys that is what we're going for so yeah uh i, I feel like that's a decent amount enough of quartz so yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So check it out. This is the place we're going to be building it in this sort of squarish area here. Like I said, it's going to be on the inside square because it is going to be a larger build. And for the most part, when it comes to like real life towns and cities, you know, the larger builds tend to be in the center of the city, right? So, you know, makes sense. Makes sense. So we want to make a 12 block wide gap in the inside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this would be a wall. This would be a wall. And yeah, 12 blocks. I think I think a 12 block wide sugarcane farm is pretty decent. The one in my Minecraft survival single player world is, I do believe, something to the number of 16, I think. So it's pretty decent. But, you know, I think as we work here, the amount of sugarcane will just slowly build up. So I think that's totally fine and dandy. But yeah, here we go. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Do you want to make it a perfectly square build? I mean, I don't see a reason why not, right? We're going to have, like, multiple compartments to this build. This is not aligned. Whoops. I done goofed. I done goofed. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do this here. And basically, what's going to happen is the, the back compartment of the building, let's say, one, two, three, four, like, the back compartment, this being the divider, is going to be the sugarcane farm area, the automatic sugarcane farm area. And then, obviously, we're going to have, like, an enchanting area. We're going to have some librarian villages set up in here as well. As well as, of course, like I mentioned, the the the, the sort of semi-automatic cow farm as well. So, yeah. There's a lot of things to do here, my friends. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to do it section by section. I think it would be a good idea to do the functional parts first. 
before we do the aesthetics. So, yes. And as a result of that, as you can see, I got myself an observer. And it's going to be the same design I used on my Minecraft survival single player one. Alrighty, guys. So the first step we're going to be doing is placing in the water stream and also the minecart system. Probably the minecart system beforehand, actually, would be a better logical idea. So here we go. We're just going to go and dig out this little area here. Okay. Looking good. We need to actually fill this area back in because we don't actually need that to, to, to be like that. So let's just go and place all of that back in. And yeah. So the water's going to be going here, but the minecart track is actually going to be going just here because the grass is going to be above it. And then the, the minecart will pick up all of the produce from underneath or from above the grass. Because uh, minecart hoppers can pick up stuff one block above you. So, yeah. So, all we need to do is we need to go and grab this. We need to place that down there. We need to place that down there. We need to get the rest of the rails. Place them down rather like this. And then in the center, we need to get ourselves uh, the collection area. So, what we may do is something along the lines of putting a little chest or double chest right here. So, let's do that. How's our iron supply looking? Very bad. I need a hopper. I need two hoppers, actually. Oh, no, I don't have enough. Oh, wait. No, I've got a couple of iron ore here. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> We're really clutching at straws in terms of our iron supply, guys. Oh, man, this is terrible. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, continue on anyway. So we've got ourselves a couple of chests, which we are going to go ahead and place down over here. So down here. There we go. Fantastic. And then the hoppers are going to go there. The tracks are going to go on top of it. And then anything that the minecart hopper picks up, as it goes along, it will just unload it into the hoppers below it, okay? And all we're going to do, very simply, is place down the two hoppers like this, facing into the chest. Let's place these bad boys on top of there, and then we are going to set off the set off the minecart, I guess. Uh, so, if I put a redstone block here... Oh, it will power it! Okay, fantastic. That's actually what I need. So, yeah. Oh, dang it! We need another hopper! Oh, man! I'm so unorganized! Yeah. I, I really do think I'm out of iron now. Oh, no. Oh, no. We've got two more, but we need more, guys. Gosh darn it. Right. Uh, hmm. Well, Mumbo has always said that his, uh, his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? His iron farm is open to the public. So I may take him up on that offer and just go to his farm and see what he's got going there in terms of produce. So, yeah, let's head over to Mumbo's iron farm. Hey, would you look at that, guys? There's a whole bunch of iron in here. Right, I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to take one and that little bit stack there. So there's, there's like three stacks left for other people to have. So, yeah. All right, nice one. Cheers, Mumbo. Appreciate it, bud. And there we go, guys. There's the minecart with a hopper. Exactly what we need. Okay, so let's head over here. We're going to set this bad boy going, and it is going to be going infinitely, pretty much. So, uh, there you go. It should just bounce side to side. Wait, what? Wait, shouldn't it just bounce from side to side? Is it because of this redstone block, is it? So, okay, what if I go ahead and uh, rejig this around a little bit? So let's put that there. Let's put that back there. Okay, and let's see what happens now. Oh, okay. That's, that's interesting. So when it hits a redstone block at the side, it stops it. But look, we've got a regular block there, and then it... Oh. That's really, really interesting. I really didn't know that that was the case. Huh. Okay. Cool. Well, I've learned something new today, ladies and gentlemen. So now, it should just go infinitely from side to side. Yes? Infinite side to side, and yeah, off it goes. Alright, fantastic. That's exactly what we need. Alright, so the next portion is we go ahead and place in the grass where the sugarcane is going to be residing. Now we can also place in the water as well. So let's get that going, and uh, let's get over here, grab, grab ourselves some more water from the infinite pool of wisdom. <laughs> That's a cool name, actually. <laughs> I should totally have that. Nice one. Okay, so yeah, that's all good. All we need to do now is place down some sugar cane. I think I've got some in my little plants chest down here. Yes, I do. Okay, fantastic. We place it down on here. So this stuff can now grow. So now what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we need to go ahead and figure out the observer slash piston pushing mechanics. So let me just remind myself real quick and I'll bring you guys back in a sec. Aha, here we go, guys. The fully automatic sugarcane farm design that I came up with is probably not new by any stretch of the imagination, but it very simply uses an observer. It detects when the sugarcane is fully grown, and then we've got some pistons on the lower block. So, yeah, it all gets picked up by the little minecart thing that goes. 
goes there. And yeah, it's very, very simple. It's very easy to build. So, yeah, feeling pretty good about this one. Let's go and get back on the Hermitcraft server. Let us go ahead and get this thing rolling. So in my case, I'm just going to use one observer because I don't imagine I'm going to be needing a, a terribly high amount. So yeah, this row here is going to be where the pistons are going to go. So let's start placing all these bad boys down. Okay, I shouldn't fall down anywhere. Okay, good stuff. And then I am very simply going to place down an observer. Uh, let's place it down uh, here. There we go. So it's now going to detect when the sugar cane is fully grown. Fantastic. Okay, so let's just go ahead and fill in the rest of this. Alright, and then all we need to do is place in the redstone on top of, let's say, this block here. And then that should actually be it. So let's place all of you down. That should activate every single piston going. So let's go ahead and make a little staircase kind of thing going down to the chest or something. Eh, why not? Okay, cool. And let's give this thing a bit of a test one. So let's go ahead and randomly pl plant down some of these. Okay, and then let's do that. Yeah, fantastic. It's working perfectly. All we need to do is we need to put down a bit of a wall here. So obviously the sugar cane can't escape. It all stays within this one block area here. It'll all be picked up and then it'll all go into, inside this chest here. Fantastic. All right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do is make the micro cow breeder. It makes use of the max entity cramming game rule that there is in that if there are more than 24 cows in the space of one block, one will die every time. And according to the tutorial made by fellow hermit impulse sv again uh it always targets adult cows so that's pretty interesting to say the very least but uh, whatever the case may be ladies and gentlemen we're going to make a start on this thing we're going to put down an andesite block right there with a button we're going to dig down four blocks here so one two three four and what we're going to do is place down a chest with a hopper on top of it and then what we need to do now is we need to place down a dispenser facing towards the hopper essentially we're going to put down a water bucket in there we're going to make our way out of here and all we need to do now is place down a fence so that's that's in the wrong place <laughs> okay so fence is going to go there and basically all that's going to happen is all the cows are going to be going inside of there and then to breed them we will get the water going it will make the cows bob up and down we can get the wheat just breed them all up and then as the cows breed up and get above 24 entities or above 24 cows it will kill off the adult cows as it goes along and what that basically means is all of the cows that die will drop all of their drops into the hopper and then go into the chest so it's pretty simple it's a pretty cool design i'm actually a big big fan of it so good job impulse it is probably one of the simplest farms i've ever seen so yeah all we need to do now though guys all we need to do now is we need to get some cows in here and as far as i can remember i'm going to get rid of this as well as far as i can remember we do have a mini cow farm up top so all i need to do is make some leads luckily i've got a whole bunch of slime balls because you know i've got a bunch of slime chunks down there <laughs> But yeah, we need to get ourselves a bunch of slime chunks. Not slime chunks. We need to get ourselves a bunch of leads. So there we go. As far as I can remember, it's like this, isn't it? For leads? Yeah, there we go. I actually remember correctly. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's go grab some cows, my friends. And let's start breeding those bad boys up. Well, here we go, guys. Only got two cows left, apparently. But, uh, yeah, we might as well go ahead and start dismantling this farm. I mean, I don't really need to keep the chickens or anything, because i got my own chicken cooker now. Hey, buddy. All right, so you two can come with me. Come on, cowsies. <laughs> You're going to come with. You're going to come back to the breeder. I'm going to breed you up. And then, yeah, you never know. An entire empire can spawn from just two cows. And that is the exact intention. <laughs> All right, let's get you guys back to base. Ah, here we go, guys. Come on, cows. You're going to come inside the base here. Right, so you can come along here, and then you've got to come down here. Come on, buddy. All right, and then you guys are just going to, like, come in here and, and stuff. There you go. You, you're going to you, go in there now. Go on. In you go. In you go. <laughs> no, don't try and resist it, buddy. <laughs> you're, you're freaking seal of doom. Oh, there you go. Your fate is sealed, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, dead. they're done now. They're freaking done. Can I? I want to get rid of the leads. All right, maybe I'll just run away from them and they'll... Ha! There we go. All right, they haven't escaped, have they? Ha! Ah, yes! Sweet! Okay, so now I can place the button down and all that kind of stuff again. And then we can actually start doing stuff with these guys. So let's place down this fence again. Oh, jeez! Hello. What the hell do you think you're doing there, brother? 
Get out of here, man. There you go. Okay, so if I do this, these guys will start bobbing up and down. And then all I need to do is grab myself a little bit of wheat. Got myself a little bit here already, which is fantastic. Okay, and then all we got to do is do a little bit of this and stuff. Yeah, go on, get bread. Get bread. Thank you. Thank you for the XP. And now you can rest. <laughs> and there we go, guys. It really is as simple as that. Incredible. Thanks, Impulse. Appreciate the design, buddy. All right, guys. The next part of what we're doing is putting the enchanting area up. That is right, guys. A long freaking last. We're going to make our own enchanting area. And look at that. Oh my goodness, I feel so OP right now. <laughs> Look at those achievements. Awesome. So, uh, because we have a bunch of villagers, you know, getting uh, getting bookshelves is actually a really easy thing to do. So, there we go. I'll get as many from this guy as I can. Okay, there we go. Can I, like, re-unlock it? Is that going to work? Yeah, look at that. Alright, let's get ourselves some more. 13. Very nice. Okay. Can you, like, re-unlock it and stuff? Hey, buddy, come back here. Come back here. Uh, right. Uh, boom. And a couple more. There we go. Fantastic. Don't even need to build them. We could just buy them. Awesome. Right, so we're going to do it in this corner over here. We're going to try and place down as many bookshelves as we can. We need to try and place down all of them to get the uh, level 30 standard uh, enchanting setup. So let's just do a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Maybe we can like put some bookshelves up in the corner there. And, uh, hmm. You see, I kind of want it to be like a, a corner enchanting area, you know? Hmm. You see, what I'm thinking now is maybe we can have the bookshelves poke out, but I'm not entirely sure that that would look very good, so I'm not entirely sure, if I'm honest, but uh, let's place down these here. There we go. So we've got five more bookshelves to plant down, so maybe what we could do is like plant them down like this. What do you guys think? I think that could look really, really cool. Yeah, and then we've got like two entrances to these things. Is this a silk touch? It is. Okay, so maybe we put one there. And then maybe we could put one here. It'll bring us to over, over the amount we actually need. But I think it'll look kind of cool. So let's go and buy one more bookshelf. Uh, eh, four, whatever. Let's get ourselves one more. And we'll place that down. And yeah, we are... Yeah, we've now got a level 30 standard enchanted setup, which is pretty awesome. I'll take that. I'll roll with it. All right, guys. So I've actually done a whole bunch of reconfiguring. And uh, as you can see, we've got all three farms on one side. I've relocated the chest to be on this side here, which is perfectly fine and dandy. We've got the enchanting setup over here now alongside an anvil and a crafting table. And of course, way back here, we have ourselves the cow farm still going strong. So yeah, but mostly what I did on this side is this side is going to be the trading hall whereby we have four librarian villagers all set up in the little posts here here we go we gotta try and get as many of the good librarian villagers as we can so without further ado let the madness commence here's villager number one there's number two in his place there's number three going into his pot all right ladies and gentlemen and there we go the fourth librarian villager has just been dropped in in. Now, obviously, what we're going to do later down the line is when we do eventually get ourselves a mending villager, pray to the Minecraft gods that we actually get one, uh, what we're going to do is kill off one of the villagers who has probably the worst trade and uh, replace him with a mending. I mean, come on, mending is like the best trade you could get. Like, like flat out, it is like the best one you can get, so... You know, it'd be kind of nice to get that at some point. It is it is the dream right now, my friends. It is the dream to have my own mending villager. But anyways, guys, yeah, things are going well. Things are going well. We've got ourselves all the villagers in here now. I've also gone ahead and I've uh, stated what each of the villagers have. So this one's got a five glass trade, which is the best one you can get. It does Frostwalker 2 and Fortune 3, which as you can see, pretty darn nice. Projectile Protection 3 is also kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, it's not bad. Five glass is the best one. And yeah, we've got these three here. Absolutely fantastic. This one's got a cheap silk touch book as well as a cheap paper trade, which is very, very nice. Pretty cool. Okay, and this one is probably the best one so far. Look at this. 20 foot. Wait, what? Okay, that was weird. My, uh, <laughs> apparently it just went off Minecraft, like the Minecraft window was inactive. But so yeah, we've got a 24 paper trade, which is the best one you can get. A cheap bookshelf trade, only three emeralds, and then we've got sharpness five, and fire aspect two, very, very nice. And then this one here, uh, it, it's, it's like mediocre in my opinion. You've got a cheap bookshelf trade, and then on top of that, it's also got projectile protection four. So, you know, kind of nice. So we'll put cheap bookshelf, and then prod, uh, prot. Four. There we go. Very nice. That would do quite nicely. There we go, guys. So we've got the little trading hall set up. Now, unfortunately, 
for some reason, as soon as I get... I had a bit of trouble before, by the way. Uh, I tried to get these guys out of the minecarts, but they weren't having it. Like, they were roaming around in here, like, just freaking out for no apparent reason. So I'm just keeping them in the minecarts for now. Once things are settled down and all set up and everything is good, then, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, get them out of the minecarts. But for now, I'm not too fussed about, you know, losing 20 iron, essentially. So, yeah, all good, my friends, all good. So, the last thing we need to do today is we need to get the roof set up and then the little self-sustaining, fully automatic, kind of farm building thing is done. So, yeah, guys, third person time lapse time. We're going to get this roof on. Let's do it. Alright guys, and here we are. We've got the roof placed on. I'm not going to call this build finished because I think there's a lot of little improvements here and there. Some detailing that I need to do, like in here. I feel like there's some detailing I could do to the roof. I mean, if we just head up to the roof real quick, uh, you'll be able to see that I did the sea lanterns in kind of a pattern on the roof. But the pattern doesn't really come through underneath, does it? So, yeah. I think there's a decent amount of... Wait, hang on. That's a, there's a ghost block up there. How dare you! But uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of detailing little things like that that I could probably do at some point. Uh, I'll probably do that off camera or something. But uh, yeah, guys, check it out. We've got the roof in, we've got the ceiling in, and yeah, everything is now stretching up to the ceiling, and it looks amazing. I'm actually really, really happy with everything that we've done today, my friends, and I hope you guys are digging it as well. We've got all of these things here, like little details such as replacing this glass pane with a full glass block so the, so the sign sits better on it, in my opinion. So yeah. But yeah, there's lots of things. Lots of things. How are we looking here? Oh, that's right. I need to <laughs> clear that out. 41 sugar canes. Not bad. We need to breed these guys back up. We need to get ourselves a little micro wheat farm or something like that going. But guys, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be too, going to be time, sorry, to end the episode. But before we do that, we'll jump into the comment question of the video, which comes from XX as Nova XX. You should add squid in behind the glass. So he's basically saying that we should put squids behind the little glass bits here. I think that would be a pretty cool idea in terms of bringing a bit more life to this place. You know, just bring some squids in and uh, rename them and then they won't ever despawn, I guess. So, that that's not a bad idea. The only thing I'm envisioning is maybe they can die if they get trapped between the water and the inside of the glass pane. Is that even a thing or would they still be classed as being underwater? I would hope so, anyway. But anyways, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, time to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. It may have been a bit of a longer one. I have no idea. But if you have enjoyed the episode, nonetheless, be sure to drop a like rating. It will be super appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on future content. And then I'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate your continued support. And we're back on full schedule, as per the norm now, my friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.